don't want to waste your time, so there won't be an intro. We are starting at your main accounts page. I am Charles Schwab. This is what it's going to look like, except you're going to have money in it. Mine doesn't have any money in it because I opened this account simply to show you how to buy a call option. Once you're here, you want to go up to the top where it says trade. You want to ignore this whole drop down menu because it's going to take you to somewhere you don't want to go. You might want to click on options, but uh, it's going to take you to a more confusing page than if you just click on trade. Notice how the page is different when you just click on trade. I have found after tooling around that this is the easiest place to enter your call option order in. All right. So once you're here, you're going to see, uh, you know, your, your count and how much money you have, your buying power, all that stuff. You can ignore that if you know what you're doing and go ahead and put in the symbol where it says symbol. For this example, we're going to do spy. And our strategy is not stock ETF, but call options. So click on that, then click on call. And after you do that, down here, you're going to get different choices. Now, the big difference between buying a call and buying stock is that you have three extra choices to make. They are the expiration date, the strike price, and the action. Let's start with the expiration date, which is exactly what it sounds to be. It is when that call option expires, when it either it gets executed or becomes worthless. So let's say, for example, we're going to go out one week. And then we're going to choose our strike price. This is the price at which above you are making money on expiration date. Um, you really got to familiarize yourself with what a strike price is before you start buying call options. It's a very important matter. Um, basically, I'm going to go with the 440s, which are roughly at the money, a little bit below the current trading price of the spider. And uh, that means that it has intrinsic value. If you go out of the money above that price, 442 is above 441, it has only a uh, time value. So usually I trade around at the money, a little bit in the money if I can. It's a uh, personal preference. You probably know what you're doing. So choose that strike price. We're doing call. Call is when you want the stock to go up. Put is when you want the stock to go down. And the third choice, I mean, we're buying a call, so I didn't con consider that a choice, but the third choice is here, this action. And this is where a lot of people get tripped up, tripped up. And you're going to make it very simple on yourself by just always choosing buy to open. I'll talk about a couple other ones in a second, but for buying a call option, you always want buy to open. It's that simple. All right, quantity just like buying a stock, how many are you choosing? Um, if you don't know the price, what you can do is go over here where it says bid, mid, and ask. Bid is what people are currently wanting to buy it for. Ask is what people are currently wanting to sell it for. Mid is what you're probably going to get. Now, for options, to understand how much you're paying, well, there's this estimated amount, of course, but that only shows up after you've done, after you've filled out this whole form. For now, think of it like this. Take the midpoint, multiply it by 100, and then multiply it by your quantity. The reason we do that is these prices, they're listed as like dollar, like $3.76. dollars. But when you buy an option, you're essentially buying 100 contracts. So you need to multiply it by 100. So think of these as in hundreds. This is $376 per contract. I'm going to buy 10. So it's going to cost me about 3760 bucks. All right, next step down here is the order type. And this is just like stock. You got the same order types. Market order means you're always buying at the ask over here. So as you can see, if I put in market order, my estimated amount is the ask price times 100 times my quantity, which is 10. So you can estimate it or you can get the answer that way. Now, when I'm trading something with high liquidity, like the SPY, I am trying to get in at a certain time, usually right as the market opens, 
or if I am day trading and I see a candlestick I like, I want to get in right away. So I don't care about that two penny difference between the ask and the mid. So I'll just go with market order. It's only a couple pennies, it's only a few bucks. And I'll just go with market order, day only, and then review order, and that's it, it goes through. However, let's talk about trying to squeeze your pennies, pinch your pennies here. Let's say you don't want this ask price, you want the mid price. What do you do? You pinch your pennies by choosing limit, and then putting in exactly what it says for mid right there, 3.76. Don't put in 376, 3.76. And that'll give you the correct estimated amount. You can always check this before you go through with your order. And uh, well, let's dive a little deeper into this limit price for a second, because I think, let's say, let's say you're dealing with something that's not so liquid. In other words, not highly traded. And these bid ask spreads, which is the difference between the bid and the ask price, they are not as tight in these less, uh, less traded options. So if you check out BTU, and let's say we're gonna go out a month or so, whatever, uh, you know, $10, you're gonna see that the bid and the ask, the bid and the ask, price have a bigger difference than what we saw in the SPY. In this case, it's about 25 pennies or $25 per option. Now, in this case, I want to get that mid price. I want to get closer to the mid price. I don't want to pay. I don't want to overpay because the spread is too big. And in my experience, you can almost always get between the bid and the mid if you use this strategy. What I like to do is I will start a little bit above the mid or a little bit above the bid, my bad. So I'll go like 2.9 and I'll review the order and let it sit for five minutes. And if it's filled, great, I got it. If it's not filled, what I'll do is I'll cancel that order, go back to this page and I'll move up. I'll start moving up that limit price closer to the mid until it's filled. You can usually get between the bid and the mid in my experience. Now, just remember this limit price is your, uh, it's what you're willing to pay maximum. It's your max uh, willingness to spend. <laughs> it's your main limit for how much you want to spend on this specific call option. Now, keep that in mind because I'm gonna show you in a minute how to close your order. I've noticed in my other videos people send me an email or the comment and they say, hey, uh, thanks, I got the option, but how do I sell it? And that's a little tricky because you've got to change your action here. So let's go back to that SPY example. Let's just start over at the beginning, go up to trade. Gonna move into SPY, symbol SPY. Strategy is call. We did this 813 expiration. We did 440 and we did buy to open, but let's assume that we have this option now and we want to sell it. I'm going to make it simple on you. Always choose sell to close. Buy to open is when you're buying an option to open a position. Sell to close is when you're selling that option to close your position. These ones in the middle, buy to close and sell to open, that's for when you're selling naked options. That's for more complex uh, strategies. For now, all we're talking about is buying calls and then taking profit on those calls. So we already have this call. We're going to sell to close, put in the same quantity. I want to sell all 10. And if you're like me, probably just see the candlestick you want to sell it at, go market order, you're done. But if you want, you get the best price, put in your limit price. And remember, we said when you buy the option, your limit price is your maximum uh, bid. But here when we're selling it, it's the minimum. It's the minimum amount of cash we want for that sale. Now, whatever it is, put it in there. Say we want to sell it. Let's say, here's a good example. Let's say we want to sell it for $4. So let's say we already bought it. We bought the call option and immediately we want to put in this order to sell. We think it's going to hit 
$4, but we're not sure when. In that case, you could just put this in as your limit price, and when it hits $4, you'll sell that option, and your trade will be closed, and you have that profit. Now, now we get to timing, which usually you just want to leave as day only. When you're buying a call option, just leave it. But when you're putting in a sell order, let's say you think the SPY call option is going to hit this price before the expiration date, you're pretty confident on that. You could just do good until canceled, and that uh, that sell order will always be out there. But generally, you know what you're doing each day, so day only. And uh, that's pretty much it, except this optional part down here. So this optional part, you can always ignore it if your quantity is one. But if your quantity is big, let's say 100, and you really want to get 100 call options, let's go back to the example of buying, sorry. All right, so we're buying 100 call options, and we really want all of them. We can't accept getting half the order filled and only having 50 call options. Let's say we had a hundred or we had 10,000 shares of SPY ETF and we want to switch over to just a hundred call options instead to replace that position. And you really want to replace that position, then you need to choose all or none. But other than that, that's, that's pretty much it. Let's just do a quick review. So open your account, go into trade, put in your symbol, the trade Apple. Always check the strategy and go down to call. Choose your expiration date. Choose your strike price. Always choose buy to open. Modify your quantity if you're buying more than one. If the spread's tight, tight enough for you to accept the ask price, you see that um, the bid price is going to save you four pennies and you don't really care about that four dollars times uh, four pennies times ten times your quantity so in this case it would be like forty dollars if you don't care about that market order and you're done if you do care about that limit order and start somewhere above the bid maybe 9.2 or whatever and then you're done again the only difference is if it's a limit price you might not get filled if it's market order, you, you definitely already bought the call option. Once you submit the order, you got that call option. Limit price, you might have to watch it, babysit it, cancel the order, move it back up, cancel the order, move it back up. And uh, optional, this optional, sometimes useful if you want to make sure you get them all. But for something that's liquid like Apple or Spy, you're always going to get it all without even having to click all or none. So that's pretty much it. Um, you guys like this video or if you have any questions or comments let me know and uh, happy trading